started in, on the no wave were not, they weren't what you would call um, real rock and rollers, you know. They were more, they were more artists, you know. Most of them, a lot of them lived in what they call, uh, like in Soho or uh, Tribeca, you know, down, um, neighborhoods in New York that were, were, were basically, um, where there were a lot of lofts, you know, um, that artists started living in. And uh, they were they were basically people who came from kind of a, a back some kind of art background, uh, you know maybe maybe went to art college or something like that, um, and had never really um, had had never really um, played a music music before, but um, you know they kind of saw what people were doing in punk rock where where. Um, you know, it was basically un you know really untrained musicians, and they and they they thought that they they decided that uh, they wanted to do something with music, and they basically just picked up instruments and and just started playing them, you know, without any kind of um, um, lessons or training or anything like that. You know, they just pick up an instrument and just see what kind of noise they can make with it, uh, almost like. In an almost like childlike way, and I was a little different. You know, I was a little different from that because I had had some musical training, but um, I could I could see like the freshness in it because they didn't they didn't have the uh, preconceptions that the trained musicians have. Um, they, they were willing to, um, you know, use any kind of sound, uh, well, a lot of music, a lot of musicians would say, that's just noise, you know, um, you know, that's no good. Probably Anya Phillips, you know, who, Anya yeah. Phillips, who later, she, who later, who became my, my girlfriend and my manager. But everybody then, you know, all, all the people in those different bands, you know, the one thing that impressed me about them was everyone was so individual, you know, they, um, like all, you know, like the other, the other, the, the, uh, the bands from before No Wave, like Richard Hell, or Heartbreakers, or Blondie, or Talking Heads, all those bands too, they, each one had their own identity, their own um, style and identity, so so strong, you know, even if I didn't, wasn't, even if I wasn't that crazy about their actual music, you know, um, they had obviously put a lot of thought into, into what they were doing, and, and, um, and, 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 it's, it's like a total thing, you know, it all went together, the way they looked, the music, uh, the way they were on stage, you know, it all fit into, uh, 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 one, one idea, um, and, and I, I, that was one thing I was always very impressed with by, by all the people on that scene. Well, I never really, a lot of, a lot of, I don't think what I'm doing now is really that no wave. It's got, it's got, um, that, an aspect of no wave, but it's got a lot of other things too that, that are really nothing to do with no wave, like the whole, you know, funk, the whole funk thing, the jazz, you know, um, I, I was to me a pure no wave band would be like Teenage Jesus or, or DNA were, were, were much more pure no wave than me because I, I always had a lot of other aspects in my music um, you know it was only really kind of partly no wave and you know and also no wave was something that didn't as a movement didn't last very long, you know. I mean, most the original bands had all broken up by about, definitely by 1981, and and you know most of the people had gone on to, to other things. So, and, and, and another thing is, um, see, we didn't think of ourselves as being no wave anyway. It was something that was made up by like a writer, a writer to, to describe the music. 
after we already created it. You know what I mean? So I, I really consider myself as, as kind of unique. And I don't really want to be, you know, given a label like no wave or, or any other, any other like label like that. 